My name is Jana and you're watching Finnish Knitting Stories, which is my little video podcast mostly about my knitting, but I guess today we will have a bit different episode. We will talk about things in general and I will I will also show you a bit of knitting in the end just to just to cheer ourselves up. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can find me on Instagram, Eskettonits, and on Ravelry, Eskettonits. I have not recorded for more than 40 days, probably even more, I don't know, I have lost the count since February, basically. And today is Saturday, April 9th, 10th, I have no idea. <laughs> all days, all days feel the same. Uh, sorry for not being able to record. Sorry for making you worry about us. I want to start by saying that my my little family, me, my husband, my kids, we are we are safe. We are okay. <laughs> as as much as it's possible. I don't know. I'm okay and not okay at the same time. I don't think I will ever be okay. Uh, it feels like that at the moment, but... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was in doubt to record or not to record, but I have received so many messages of you worrying about us, and I just wanted to make this little video to to tell you that we are, we are safe. That's... yeah, because we're in Finland, nothing is like... <laughs> There is no war in Finland. The war is in Ukraine and we do live very close to the to the aggressor. We we are very close to the border and people around are are worried. People are preparing for all kind of possible events. Nobody knows what will happen tomorrow and it's it, it it does not feel <laughs> light, let me tell you. Yeah, so as most of you probably know, on 24th of February, year 2022, Russia invaded Ukraine. <sighs> Ukraine is just here around the corner in Europe, not that far from <laughs> from from here. It feels far, I don't know, many Finnish people think it's really far, but it's it's not that far. Uh, I think I have mentioned it before, but my mom was born in Ukraine, and I have spent every summer of my childhood in Ukraine. So, I have relatives there. Uh, not everyone is safe, and... I'm just trying to get through this video without breaking into tears because I I think I have during the last month I have cried more than ever in my life. <laughs> um, it's still hard to believe it's happening. It's very hard to process the idea that in our modern world somebody can just try to go and destroy the neighbor without any the reason, I don't know, probably they have their crazy reasons in their heads, but <sighs> but the rest of the world is wondering, the whole civilized world is wondering what, what were they thinking. No, I don't know. It's not surprising. The methods they are applying, the horrible, terrifying things they are doing to Ukrainian people, yeah, the amount of Russian, Russian soldiers that have been killed by brave Ukrainians is also terrifying. But we're, we, we're just wondering, what are they thinking? Unfortunately, Russia has always been the country where human life 
has no value. And yeah, where a single human life is just the mechanism of achieving their 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 goals. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I'm I was born in the country that was occupied by the Soviet Union, which is now Russia is claiming to be there. Yeah, they are keeping with, within the tradition of Soviet Union. And a lot of Latvians were sent out to Siberia and murdered because they were afraid of them. A lot of educated people, talented people, great people who could change something in the country were sent away to die in Siberia. <sighs> and... I don't know. I'm amazed at the country that celebrates the victory of Second World War every year. 9th of May, they have those great parades. They just go and destroy their neighbor. I don't know what has happened to historical memory. Well, why? Why they are not afraid of war? Why they are not my my grandparents were in a war yeah i'm my grandfather on my father's side fought in a world war 2 he lost a leg but he returned home alive without the leg and he never wanted to talk about the war he was just saying one thing i went that my kids wouldn't have to it's still hard to believe that they have started this in year 2022 and nobody knows for what. I'm sorry if this episode is a bit heavy, but it the whole situation has hit me hard. It has hit me really hard because I remember my grandfather. I have his war medals. I... I, I don't know everything he has been through, I can only imagine, but I know his attitude towards it. And when there were those great films about war on TV, he just said, ah, I can't watch that, it's all a lie. Yeah, there was nothing romantic about war, there was nothing great about it, it was just a horrible thing, and it's repeating again. All because of our vicious neighbor. <sighs> yeah, they are power drunk, they are bullies, and they need to be stopped. And I hope most of the Europeans realize that Ukraine is right now fighting for all of us, and we need to help and support them in every possible way we can. <sighs> yeah, when when I got a message on 24th in the morning that the war has started, I, I don't know, I couldn't believe it. For, for the first week I was just paralyzed and I, I felt like I can't do anything. I can't breathe, I can't eat, I can't sleep. I was just crying hysterically and I could not grasp the, the situation. I was calling my relatives, I was sending them messages. I also have a lot of friends in Ukraine. Some of them are Ukrainian, some are Russian, some are Latvian, some are Finnish. Yeah, we also have Finnish friends that live in Ukraine. And not everyone is safe. And it's absolutely terrifying when you send a message like, are you okay? And the answer does not come. Does not come straight away, does not come in an hour, does not come in a day. And you have all of these crazy pictures going through your mind, like, what happened? Uh, yeah, my mom's sister is there. My mom's older sister, my aunt. Uh, she's on the territory occupied by Russian army. And we are trying to get her out. And we don't know if it's possible anymore. 
When there was a chance, she refused to leave. She's an older lady and she really did not want to leave her home. And she was telling us that if it's meant to be, she would rather die on her land in her home. Now she has agreed to leave because it's getting it's getting worse. There is no electricity. There is no heat. No, there is still electricity. They had a cut. Now it has been renewed again, but there is no running water and there is no heating. It's still rather cold there, but the water is the biggest problem because when it gets very hot, there is not even, I don't know, rainwater. There's not even a puddle to drink from. It's, it's to that point. Yeah, they've been sitting in basements for weeks and... I have cousins there, I have friends there, and we have lost contact with some of them. I really hope they are okay, really hope they are somewhere safe, but <sighs> I, just, I just hope they are alive. Yeah, maybe they don't have phones, maybe they have been forcefully taken out to Russia because they were in a territory next to the Russian border. That also happens to people, that they are forcefully taken to Russia. And it's, it's also scary. Yeah. And it's scary how many Russian people support this war. I understand they are scared and terrified also. There are sensible people in Russia. We have friends in Russia who, who are against all of this, but they can't do much because... Uh, you can't even call war a war in Russia right now. If you use a word, word war or peace somewhere publicly, you can go to jail for up to 15 years. How crazy is that? How crazy it is to, to live in a country like that, where you can't call a cat a cat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I'm now regretting recording this. I'm starting to regret recording this because I don't know. I don't want to bring any of you down. I just wanted to share, share what's, what's been going on with me. And I don't know. It's very hard to talk about something else. It's very hard to live normal life try to live normal life. I think it's it's one of the hardest things right now because I'm I'm trying to figure out different purpose of my life because so many things have lost meaning or value. Uh yeah, after I stopped crying, I think uh, around one week one week after the beginning of the war. I decided that I need to do something because I will drive myself insane and it's no good for, for any of us. My husband was very understanding. He took care of me and the kids for that week when I was not able to function and he was also telling me that you need to find yourself a purpose. Then I was thinking, okay, what, what I can do except donating money to various organizations, which I did. We donated money to many different organizations, mainly the ones that work with children in Ukraine. And I, I donated as a private person, I donated from my little business, but the resources are limited and I still needed to do something. So I started to looking for volunteering options around here because people started to arrive. People from Ukraine started to come to our town, Kotka. And yeah, I've been for last month, a bit more, I've been just trying to help them settle in, to get them things, to, to show them around, to answer their questions, to help them in any possible way I can. I've been doing it, I think, every day, except a couple of days. A few weeks ago, our daughter was ill. I had the son. Both kids were ill, and my husband was not feeling well, so I had to stay at home for a 
few days to take care of them. Then I took a little break. I even managed to knit something during those days while they were resting. And yeah, but other way, otherwise I've been just collecting stuff like essentials, like bedding, I don't know, kitchen stuff, pots, plates, clothes, toys and then distributing them to the families in need because yeah we have a centralized we have a center for refugees but their resources are limited as well and there were so many people coming that they did not manage to provide them with things and we have a volunteer center in Kotka just local people came together made their own center where people could bring things and they were sorting them and distributing i've been working with them as well i've been volunteering there i've been helping with translations and carrying stuff mostly bringing stuff to the families and talking to them and i have met the most amazing people during the last month i i i have new friends now other volunteers here in Kotka and when we started it was about I don't know five seven people and now it's I would say close to a hundred it's absolutely amazing how this thing has grown and more people are willing to help <sighs> because when a Ukrainian family arrives here in our town they are put in an empty apartment in a good case, there were beds or just mattresses on the floor and nothing else. And then us volunteers were trying to get them all the essentials as quickly as possible. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> and people have donated things and have been generally amazing. Because most of the people arriving usually have a backpack with them, one backpack of stuff. Sometimes not even that. Sometimes people just have clothes that they are wearing and maybe a phone, even even if that. So, yeah. And all the Ukrainian people arriving to our town have been very humble and grateful. And I can't even imagine the horrifying things they have been through. They have been sharing their stories with me and... I've been crying with them and yeah I'm a, I'm a crappy volunteer in that way I I burst into tears at the if they start crying I start crying yeah <laughs> um and one more thing that always amazes me it's it's just the spirit of of the nation they try to feed me yeah I <laughs> Every time I come to them, I bring something, they try to feed me. And it's... It, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's the spirit of the nation. Oh, we just made, I don't know, borscht or like meatballs or these pies. Would you like someday make me tea? And I, I say, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> yeah, I don't need anything. But every time they, they try to feed me, they, they try to take care of me. And then sit down... Take a take take a break here. Sit with us. Have a cup of tea. Yeah, I don't know. That that nation has insane strength and feeling of freedom. They they are a free nation and they they want to live on their own land. They want to return home on their own land, and that nobody would tell them how to live. Yeah, they are incredibly kind, they are caring, and they are strong. They are strong, and I hope this nightmare will end, and we all help them to rebuild the country. Because it has been destroyed, it has taken a lot of damage, many people don't have homes to return to and I hope they can stay here as long as they need, that our government will also take care of them and give them temporary home for as long as they need. And we will, we will be helping. <laughs> so 
if you have Ukrainians arriving in your area, you just give them a hand. Just ask if, if they need anything. Maybe they need help figuring out how public transport works or what food, where to buy food or where to get clothes or maybe, yeah, how to get to the library. Yeah, one of the most common questions, <laughs> how to get to the library. Yeah, and can we get a card for free, library card for free? Yes, in Finland you can. Uh, yeah, so if you have Ukrainians in your area, help them out. Just however you can. Maybe you can share your things with them. Maybe maybe somebody's knitting. You can give them some yarn and needles. Maybe they need clothes or sometimes they need food and they are very shy to ask because they are people who have had very normal life and it all got taken away in a blink. And they very often feel uncomfortable asking for help. Because maybe before they were helping other people and now they are in a position where they need to help. And I don't know, I feel uncomfortable when they are thanking me because I, I'm glad to do that. I, I just want to help. I, I don't want, yeah. I have heard it so many times, them asking me, how can we pay you back? Oh my god, no, I, I, I don't know, I just burst into tears because I, I, I don't need to be paid back. I'm doing it because I, I want their life to be normal again as much as it's possible. <sighs> so, that's, that's what's been going on around here. And... I don't know what else to say. There are so many things I would like to share, but it would it would just <laughs> I don't know. Is it appropriate or do you even want to hear it? Are you interested in that? Yeah. And... <sighs> I've been glued to the news almost every day. I'm trying to limit my my news consumption to just once a day and if you're following the news please check a few sources two three different sources because not everybody is telling the truth uh yeah often you hear something that you know is not true and it's very hard to check for uh, it's very hard to check during the war war time if it's true how do you know if the source is good they they will have references of the information they have received if there are references and if they say that if they give you some number let's say of deaths there always should be a mark that uh, during the war time we cannot know for sure or we cannot check for sure if this data is correct. If it's given by the officials, it's one thing. It will be mentioned that it's given by officials. And still, <laughs> uh, yeah, we have heard the news from Russia that they have no losses. They have no losses. They have not lost even one soldier in the beginning of the war. Or like, oh, we did not send the, the young boys that were just called to the army and recruited. And it, it turned out to be a lie. So, anyways. I don't know. Should we talk about knitting? Would you like to talk about knitting? I think I'll add, I'll try to add a timestamp that if you don't want to hear the things about war or Ukraine, you can just skip 
do anything. I should have mentioned that in the beginning, probably. <sighs> okay. I'm sorry if I'm a bit slow and low energy. I have been feeling tired because today is my day off in a long time. I'm trying to take a day off as much as it's possible. I'm still doing some cleaning. I'm cleaning the house and doing laundry and cooking food. But I mean that I am think I'm not going to go anywhere today to do the volunteer work. Might still get a few phone calls because I'm also on the phone. If people have questions, they can call me. If people need help, they can call me. I can go pick them up, take them somewhere. There is an emergency. I'm always on the phone. Uh, let's talk about knitting, shall we? Let's 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 talk about something positive. Uh, I will show you a couple of my knits. I have not done much during this time, but sometimes in the evening when I have felt like I, I have been knitting a little bit. I have noticed it did not bring me as much joy as I would thought. I, I thought knitting is always the thing that has saved me before in, in, in bad life situations. It's always soothing and it's always helping. But for some reason, not, not this time. It... I don't know. <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm a mess. <laughs> I'm trying to stay calm and talk about something else rather than the Ukrainian situation, but it's very hard. It's very hard to be... to go back to the normal. I don't know when will it happen, if, yeah, when Russian soldiers have left the territory of Ukraine, and maybe then, but... Uh, I'll, what if I just... I'll show you a pair of socks. <laughs> Look, I need a pair of socks. I finished them last night, actually. We were... We were... What were we doing? We were watching something on TV yesterday and I finished a pair of socks. Yeah, look, they, they are blue, blue and yellow. That's a coincidence. That was not on purpose. This is a Finnish sheep wool uh, by, by Yellow Villa, a Finnish yarn dyer, Yellow Villa. And I bought a couple of skeins of this thicker, thicker sock yarn at Juvoskula last year. I think I bought these in autumn or summer. I don't remember. Maybe. <laughs> but I think in autumn. Uh, so I made a pair. These are for me. These are just for me to wear at home. To be cozy. And the color is absolutely beautiful. I think it's a, it's a beautiful color. There's a bit of pink. I don't know. Can this camera pick it up? Yes. That's a finished object, guys. And another one is here. I actually finished this uh, in February. Uh, I think I showed it in my last episode. It's um, the pattern is Maya cardigan. Yeah, it's a cardigan, but I turned it into a sweater for myself. It's knit in lead loppy. It's getting a bit warm for it, but I've been I've been wearing it a lot. It's just two colors. The original pattern is very colorful, but yeah, and my sleeves turned out too big, <laughs> too long. I don't know. I miscounted something because here was this beautiful pattern and then, yeah, it doesn't bother me. It's fine. It's it's cozier that way. But yeah, I made the mistake in a calculation and they, they are too long. So I'm just folding the cuff. And this is this is a long one. Look. Yeah, it's it's it, it it's a long one. There is a beautiful pattern right here and it's a big and cozy sweater that I've been I've been wearing a lot lately because I've been I I needed something big and cozy. So that's two finished objects 
and then I knit one more thing. It's almost finished. I have not woven in the ends. Uh, I knit it when my family was ill. Um, I was feeling okay a couple of weeks ago. I knit this, and it's a it's a pinguono by Stephen West. I have wanted to knit it for many years. I even started another version. It was a bright and colorful. But then I decided that I want a much, much calmer one. I want something big, cozy. I want a big, cozy cocoon for myself for upcoming spring. And I just pulled all kind of neutral, pale, pastel yarns from my shelf. I used some of the full skeins, those single skeins that I only had one. And I held it together with a strand of white mohair throughout. Then I added a bit of te textured yarn. There is some hand spun, there is some store bought that I have had in my stash. And yeah, <laughs> I have not woven in the ends and I have not blocked it, but I just really wanted to share it with you because I think it turned out awesome. And now my mom saw it and she wants one. She wants the same one. So I might be knitting another one. She asked, can she get one for her birthday? Her birthday is in December, so I still have time. <laughs> I still have time to do that. Yeah, I'm not gonna try it on because yeah, it has not been blocked and I have this thick, thick sweater now. But I think I will show it properly to you during during the next episode but i love the colors i love the colors i love the textures and it's a it's a wonderful wonderful piece i'm not gonna promise anything but i will really try to record episodes regularly now that we have more volunteers in kotka i think i can I can try to calm myself down a little bit because when it was just a few of us, I, I was running like a mad dog. I was not sleeping. I was just making lists, thinking where to get stuff. And yeah, one day, it was late evening, I was sitting at our living room table, at our dining table in the living room. I was making a list. My... Yeah, I was complaining to my husband that I need to find shoes. I need to find winter shoes, size 41. I don't know, where do I find them? I need them tomorrow. There is a person without shoes. Because their shoes broke on the way here. And yeah. And he looked me in the eye and said, Do you know you can't help everyone? I said, yeah, I know. Then there was a pause. He knows me also, also well. He looked at me again. But you're gonna try anyways, right? <laughs> yeah, my husband knows me. <laughs> I will try anyways, yeah. I know I can't help anyone, but... <laughs> I don't know, I decided that even if I can help one family, I don't know, five, ten... 20. That, that's already a lot. It's better than nothing and I feel like I'm doing something. I'm doing something with my life. I can't go to Ukraine and help there, so I need to help here where I am. <sighs> and honestly, it's, I think it's the only thing that's keeping me sane right now. There's also a lot of things happening in in my personal life yeah our daughter has been having some health issues and she has had two procedures now they are like mini surgeries the last one was on thursday yeah we were scheduled for later this year but they got a cancellation they called me the previous day and said can you come in on thursday i said okay and yeah yeah I, it went well but it's very stressful every time she's put under because we never know how it's gonna affect her 
um, yeah, then we visited the eye doctor in Helsinki and yeah, she will need glasses. We will try glasses. Yeah, it's not a big deal, but still, I don't know how, how will she take that. <laughs> Am I wearing it wrong? No, this is the front. I was wondering why is that? Because I'm sitting on it. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then if you remember, there is a person with cancer in our direct family. And uh, yesterday they had the fifth round of chemo. And they are, they are not feeling well. Yeah, they are taking chemo pretty badly. I don't know. We feel that every time it's worse than before. We are hoping for the best, but we still don't know how, how it's going to go. Uh, a bit about my personal life in the middle of the knitting stuff. Sorry, I I don't have notes. I don't have a plan. I just wanted to record something just to let you know that we are f fine as as much as it's possible. Yeah. I don't know. It's very, very hard to pretend <laughs> to, to, to be normal. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretending to be normal. I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm doing my best. I will show you a couple of more whips. I hope you, you can get through this episode with me. Yeah, I, and then the... Uh, <laughs> I'll show you a few more more whips. Um, mm, I think I mentioned it once that Anna Johanna was working on a pattern, on a pattern of a cardigan that was striping uh, like a merino or wool, merino wool or regular any some kind of regular yarn with a mohair. Uh, it was a stripy cardigan with a round yoke, and I've been. Yeah, I somehow missed the test knitting call, so I, I've been waiting for it for, I would say, over half of a year, probably. And now the pattern came out. Uh, I, 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 I purchased it because I, I purchased it when it came out. I think it was a few weeks ago, and I started yesterday. Yesterday, after finishing socks, I started a cardigan for myself because, I don't know, I needed something to bring myself a bit of joy. And I started Vaka. Vaka cardigan by Anna Johanna. Anna Johanna is a wonderful Finnish knitwear designer. And, um, yeah, I will show you what, what I have done. That's the color. It's not as crazy neon as it looks now in the video. It's much softer. It's my hand dyed yarn. It's this new spring color that I dyed in January or February. I don't remember. It's called Frozen Watermelon. Again, not so neony as it looks there. But, okay, I will show you the cardigan. This is the back. This is the back and yeah, you get the idea. You stripe merino with mohair and look, I even managed to separate separate the sleeves yesterday. Yeah, it's super quick knit because the, the stripes are the stripes are very addictive. I've separated the sleeves and this will be my, I don't know, it looks small. I hope the size is okay. <laughs> hope the size is okay. Looks small. I'm knitting size M. M two. Like medium two. Um, I have not tried it on, but I hope it fits. It should fit. Yeah, it will stretch out when I when I block it. I've knit a similar cardigan, but it had a different construction by Hohi Locatelli Elton cardigan. It's in a pale pink, in a dusty rose color. I think you have probably seen it. Maybe, maybe. I don't know how I showed it. Uh, 
yeah but there the stripe is more narrow and it's a boxy short cardigan this one i will make just a tad longer like a medium length and it will it will be my beautiful summer spring piece i think yeah here the color is probably better it's not crazy neon it's not that bright it's it's a it's a calmer one so that's the cardigan i'm working on and i've been thinking about other colors you can use for this i think it would be fun if stripes would be different color maybe or if one of the yarns would be solid and another one maybe speckled or something like that possibilities are endless on this one you could even use scraps for this oh <gasps> how cool would that be if the, the mohair would be single color and all of these stripes would be just scrap yarn different color oh <gasps> that's a good that's a good idea that's a good idea i need to keep that in mind for for the future so this is my active whip and then have you noticed already this uh remember when when there was a giveaway on my channel a wonderful jill of bertie and poppet sent me a gift she 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 yeah she she sent one bag one beautiful bag to one of my giveaway winners uh, and she also sent me a gift and i received it several weeks ago i was in a very bad place and i put the package on my table in the craft room and i opened it yesterday because it just felt that it needs to be a moment when i'm able to enjoy it because otherwise it would be unfair and i opened it yesterday and it it brought me so much joy thank you so much jill i i love the bag she sent me one of her bigger sizes i actually i think i think i have all of the other sizes of jill's bags but not this very big one not this very big one and it's absolutely beautiful bertie and poppet on etsy wonderful bag maker from the uk lining is fantastic as always it's a sturdy bag yeah it sits up nicely and then then there was absolutely lo lovely card ah! card with it look how beautiful it's a knitting rabbit it's a beautiful card with a knitting rabbit and then i lost it ah. and then there were also some some stitch markers i haven't opened them yet but they are there <sighs> i have i've been looking at the package for several weeks and yesterday just felt right that now i will be maybe i will be able to to enjoy this thank you so much jill it's 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 beautiful it has brought me so much joy it brightened up my week and you're a very kind person and thank you so much and now i could show you what's living in this bag there is a project that i started maybe a month ago no not a month ago maybe two weeks ago i started the blanket because i felt like i i needed something needed something mindless and cozy and yeah look this 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 bag can fit a whole blanket in i i started the blanket i'm trying to make it a gradient blanket trying <laughs> and i'm holding a strand of merino sock merino with a strand of white mohair i'm not using any pattern i just cast on i'm not sure how many stitches i could count them and tell you next time i would say i don't know maybe around 200 i'm making I, I cord edging as i go and i have knit this much yeah just making a blanket making a blanket let's knit for a bit look there are foxes of course there are foxes because it's a, it's, it 
was made for me. Jill made this bag especially for me, so it, it had to have foxes. It's absolutely beautiful. I think it 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 goes with my my sweater. I love it. I love it so much. <sighs> let's let's knit a bit. <laughs> uh, I'm very sorry if I have made you worry about me. I just was not in a good place. I have not been on social media much. I have not been on Ravelry. It is open on my... I have a tab open on my laptop, but I, I don't go there. Except I bought some patterns from Ukrainian designers just to support them when all of this started and you actually could do the same um i've been thinking of making maybe an episode on the ukrainian designers ukrainian knitwear designers because and crochet and crochet because uh there are a lot of them there are a lot of great designers and uh some of them are my friends <laughs> um some of them i have even met in real life most of them I have not, but we have been chatting in groups and messaging back and forward and test knitting things together. But I think I will try to make a separate episode for that, if you're interested. Like, I'm usually telling about Finnish designers, but this time we could talk about Ukrainian designers. I could gather the things that I have knit and show them to you and... Yeah... But for now, I will add a link link down below for um, for Ukrainian knitwear designers on on Etsy. Uh, why why am I saying Etsy on Ravelry? Because I have bought some things off Etsy too. Yeah, I've been just trying to find ways to support people directly. So. Uh, there are so many ways. Uh, Airbnb booking apartments in the war areas. Because Airbnb is not, not charging. Yeah, they have dropped the fees from, from Ukrainians. Yeah, they are not charging them anything. So uh, I booked a couple of apartments for a weekend in Kharkiv and Mariupol to support the people directly. Um... What else? I have bought tickets to the zoo just to help them with the t uh, food. Um, yeah, I have bought patterns by Ukrainian designers. I have bought art of Etsy to support Ukrainian designers. Artists, designers, yeah, I don't know. I haven't slept much. <laughs> Sorry if, if my thoughts are not flowing too well. Yeah, and you, if you're in a position to do that, you, you, you can do the same. And thank you so much for everyone who has sent me some coffee money. I have spent every cent of that buying stuff for Ukrainian families. Because it's not always possible to gather everything from from volunteers and from people are, who are willing to donate we were missing things and then then i have been just taking my own money and buying the mi missing essentials like underwear and hygiene products and things like that yeah um so you have been helping me to do that as well i have spent the, the coffee money that that you have sent my channel channel for a good purpose uh i i, I really hope i can keep up with this that it's it, i can maybe make episodes more often than <laughs> once a month now uh i i'm trying to knit it's, uh, I'm not knitting even close to the amounts I used to knit before, but I hope things will 
calm down eventually. They they have to run out of resources. Talking about our neighbors. I don't know. They are just big bullies and they are trying to scare everyone. Like they invaded Finnish airspace. I think yesterday. For three minutes. Yeah, that was not nice. <laughs> but... Yeah, we don't give in to bullies. Yeah, in Finland we're fighting bullying in, in school, so we have to fight it on a political scene as well. Because what do you do if somebody is a bully and a liar? You cut them off. <sighs> yeah. I think it's hard to find a country that they have not <laughs> they have not pissed off who does not have a nasty history with with that land. Finland sure has and Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, Poland, Moldova, Georgia, Syria, Chechnya. All the terrible things and many more. Yeah, I bet most of the countries know whom we're dealing with. And it's nice to see Europeans final, finally coming together. Except some who are still trying to cover their butts first. Yeah. But we hope that that the rest will convince them to give up Russian energy resources because there are still a few countries in the EU who don't want to give up Russian oil and gas because it would make them uncomfortable. Yeah, but by buying things from that land we are unfortunately sponsoring the war with every cent and rubble. That's why, I don't know, I'm very upset with the big corporations that have not left the Russian market because they are paying taxes there and sponsoring the war, sponsoring murdering of Ukrainian children. Some of the Finnish companies too, and most of the people will refuse to buy their goods also here in Finland. I hope they are ready for the consequences. And some of them have been trying to be sneaky and just have renamed their businesses in Russia not to be associated, but people still know that they own them, that big Finnish companies are still trading in Russia. And not just Finnish, American and French and many others. And it's not nice. I know not all Russian people are bad. I have friends in Russia who are against this war and I don't know, maybe 10-15% of Russian people are very sensible and they don't want to be a part of it and they maybe don't have power to stop this. But unfortunately, it will affect them too. And then when people say, oh, but what have I done? Why are you punishing me? No, in, in this situation, there is no other way because every dollar, euro, rubble that's put in taxes in Russia will go to war. To buy more bullets. <laughs> to shoot Ukrainian children. That's why big businesses have stopped trading there. Which is the right decision. In my opinion. <sighs> Unfortunately it affects the regular people as well. But there is no other way to do it. And But most of the Russian people are just upset that... That their life quality has suffered. That they can't buy things they like 
YouTube is not paying them advertising money and they will have to get real jobs. Most of Russian bloggers are crying that they will have to get real jobs. Oh well. Yeah, and then some superstars are upset that they were not sold Chanel bags in Dubai. Yeah, that's what they are upset about, that they can't buy a purse. Because that's the most important thing right now, a new purse. Uh, denying the war does not make it go away. Saying that, oh, what do I have to do with it? does not stop it. If you're a taxpayer in Russia, you have everything to do with it because government, your government is using your money to kill your neighbors. <sighs> yeah. I have lost friendships over this. I have unsubscribed from huge amount of people who keep supporting this because I I cannot I cannot be in the same space with them. I cannot grasp how somebody in their sane mind can support this. I can maybe understand if you're trying to save your own behind and you're I don't know, not saying anything about it. Okay. Not the greatest thing to do, but I can maybe understand that. And still, probably no. <laughs> but when you're openly supporting it, then you should be on the same list with all the other mur murderers and criminals who started it. <sighs> yeah, okay. <laughs> As you can see, I'm 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 on a wave. I'm happy place again. Back to the back to the war topic. That's how my life has been for for last forty days, a bit more. I have lost the count. It's day number forty four, maybe forty five. I don't know. I have lost the count. I I. <laughs> Yeah, I only re realized that today's Saturday because kids are home. I've been trying to go to work and do my usual thing and try to return back to normal life, but it's it's really hard. I'm 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 still working. I'm I I need to feed my family. I have no other choice but but it, it, it does not come easy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Please tell me how, how have you been? What have you been up to? I'm very sorry if, if, if I have missed a lot of things. I hope I can catch up. I still need to visit my rivalry group. I hope you've been chatting there with each other. I don't know. I haven't looked at it since since February. Just have not had strength or time. Yeah, but I I hope I hope that spring will bring some good news. I really hope this nightmare ends soon. I don't know. Will there ever be feeling of normal? Will it ever, ever feel normal again? Um, yeah, I'm sorry for this. <laughs> um, I don't know. Sad, a bit sad episode. I, I tried to make it lighter, but I don't think it's possible under the given, given circumstances. Yeah, it's longer than I planned and it's slower and sadder than I planned, but it's just is what it is. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go keep, keep cleaning. Yeah, I have a lot of cleaning to do. Have not been 
spending much time at home. <laughs> Kids have missed every every single corner of, of this house <laughs> during the week. Uh, but we'll go and enjoy my my free day, I guess. The weather is nice today, yeah. Uh, not just the world has gone insane, the mother nature has gone insane. We we had snow in the morning, now it's sunny and melting and then it's been raining and snowing and freezing and melting and it's been absolutely mad. I don't know what's happening. It's April, we usually have already some first flowers and grass but now we still have a meter of snow in the yard and there's just coming more. And it freezes, then it melts, it's just ice and... But today is nice and sunny day and probably take a dog and go for a walk with kids uh yeah i guess that's it for today and i hope you <laughs> you enjoyed i don't know can you enjoy this that's not the right word probably just thank you for being here thank you for spending your time with me and i will try to i will try to make the next episode more about knitting yeah let's talk about ukrainian designers next time i'll try to prepare something for you uh now i'm gonna go and i hope to see you soon i'm not gonna say when because i have no idea it's all about my my weird schedules <laughs> I don't have much of a plan. Maybe next week, maybe in two weeks. We will see. It depends. Yeah, also, usually when I'm home, somebody else is home, being very loud, <laughs> making it almost impossible to record. But um, yeah, today I'm having a quiet moment. Everybody is busy with something else. So thank you so much. Thank you for, for your support. Thank you for all your lovely, kind messages. I know I have not answered. I will try to do my best. And just thank you. Take care and stay safe and hopeful. I will see you next time. Heippa.